All right, guys, we're back. Um, we are going to be uh, today doing the new network trainer class. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. Um, right now, all we have in place is this simple network trainer. And this is really, it's working and it's doing what we want, but it's not exactly flexible. Um, and so we're going to sort of abstract some of the actions and do their own methods and uh, and provide some hooks for subclassing. So we're going to go ahead and start building ourselves the actual network trainer base class. All right. So public class network trainer. All right. Now, um, I will need oh, one of the nice things is that we're going to be able to just copy paste a lot of this stuff um, and just put it into the correct place and be good to go. So one of those things, let me create a region. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to create a region for this stuff. Uh, but one of the things we can copy and paste in is all of our all of our properties here. So uh, everything from public fields, private fields, um, let's see, check nudge, that's going to get copied over identically. Get error history is just a little accessor method we have. So let's go ahead and take everything, for, including get error history, the check nudge method, and all of the fields and properties for the class, and just go down here, paste them in, just like that. All right. So that's going pretty well so far. Um, we are going to need a new constructor. So let's go ahead and look at what we're doing up here in the constructor um, and create a new version. So this is uh, public network trainer has the exact same parameters, a backpropagation network, a VPN, and a data set DS. Oh, that's my cat freaking out. Um, so we're going to need this first line from simple network trainer. Network equals BPN, data set equals DS. Let's go ahead and take that stuff. Um, but one of the things I want to be able to do is call this network trainer over and over again without having to create a new instance. Um, and so all of the stuff from the, uh, the constructor in simple network trainer that resets the index permutator and um, creates the error history list, I'm going to take those and put them into their own method called initialize. So let's create uh, an initialize method. Let me just put a comment here for constructor. Enzo, it's OK. Sorry. OK, so public void initialize. OK, and what this is going to do is it's going to have in it all of these pieces. So let's take a copy of those. And paste them in here. I'm going to take the iterations part, put that at the top, and then I'm going to do the following. So if IDX equals null, then we need to create a new one. Else, I'm going to permute it to shuffle stuff around. So IDX dot permute on data set dot size, just like that. Similarly, um, if it doesn't exist, I'm going to uh, create error history, otherwise I'm going to clear it out. So if error history equals null, then let's go ahead and do what we're doing here. Else um, error history dot clear. That will delete all of the error history for the next pass. Okay. So now up in the constructor for network trainer, we're simply going to call initialize just like that. OK, so and we're going to use this initialize method in one more place. So there's our constructor and our initialize method. Now, um, <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to provide places that are sort of the natural breakpoints for, uh, well, really this whole train data set method. Um, there's the stuff that we do before we train the data set, for example, when we create this thing, we create a permutator, and we set iterations to zero, we clear out the error history. And all that stuff is going to need to happen every time before we actually do the trained data set. So I'm going to use this um, structure 
that is a before, do, after uh, that looks like the following. So these are going to be the private training methods. All right. So private bool this time underscore before train data set. All right. <clears throat> For now, I'm just going to put in a return true. I'm going to put in a private bool underscore train data set action. Okay, again, I'm just going to put in a return true real quick. And private bool underscore after train data set. I missed my T. Just like that. And again, let's just return true for now. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put all of the actions for training a data set in here in the train data set action. Everything that needs to happen precisely once and before we're actually training the data set is going to go in here. And anything that we need to do to clean up afterwards or do anything special is obviously going to go in after train data set. Um, now, these are bools because I'm actually going to allow them to fail and sort of handle that a little bit more smartly. Um, and that's going to help us actually in the future. So for now, I'm just going to set the structure up in place. Now, before train data set, um, what kind of stuff do I want to do before I train a data set? Well, I would like, first of all, I would like the permutator to be set up. I would like the error history to be cleared. I would like the iterations to be set to zero. And what do you know? We have a initialize method that does all of those things for us, right? And does them smartly. Only if I need to, will it actually create them? Otherwise, it will clear them out and permute them. So before we train data set, let's call initialize, OK? So this means in my, you can see in my program, I would, I would literally hit F5 and run this every single time because I had no way to reset the trainer class or do anything like that. And what this is going to do is let us instantiate it once and then train it uh, and then look at the results and maybe train it again. I don't know. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but we needed this in place so that we can kind of reset that stuff. Now, before I do the train data set action, I'm actually going to need to put in place uh, the structure that it's going to call. Now, what do we do when we train a data set? So let's go up and look at train data set. You can see in here, well, we have a do while, right? And this while checks uh, iterations and our error. Um, and we do stuff inside the do loop, OK? Inside here, we do stuff before we train the epic, like increment the iterator, set the error to 0, permute the index. We do the actual action of training the epic. And then we do a bunch of junk afterwards, like tracking the error history and doing our check nudge. And so again, this is nicely broken up into before, an action do block, and an after. So let me go ahead and just create those methods right now. Uh, oh, I was in the wrong class. OK, so let me collapse these. These again are going to be private bools. So private bool underscore before train epic. All right. And in here, we're going to put in just a return true because I'm just uh, prototyping right now. Oops. Private bool underscore train epic action. Return true. And private bool after train epic. <clears throat> Return true. Okay, so let's, um, let's, well, in train data set action, I need to be calling these methods, right? The stuff that you do before, the actual training of the epic, and the stuff that you do afterwards. So let me go up here and grab those pieces. Um, you can see right here, prepare to train epic from inside the public train data set method. I'm going to copy that stuff. This obviously needs to happen every time I'm a about to train an epic before. Okay, so this goes in before train epic, like so. Um, the actual train epic action is, all right, there's already a comment for it, train this epic. So I'm going to copy that, go into train epic action, paste it. And then I'm going to take the stuff that we do afterwards, 
like tracking the error history, copy that, go down to after train epic, paste it there, just like so. While I'm here looking at after train epic, one of the things I noticed that I didn't include before was a way to turn on or off this check nudge method. Maybe for some reason I don't want to have this randomization happening. Maybe I strictly want to let the um, algorithm do its thing. So while I'm here, let me run down to the public fields and add a public bool just called nudge, which equals true. Okay. And what this is going to do, if I go here into after train epic, if iterations mod nudge window is zero and nudge is true, right? So it's active, then I'll call check nudge. And so this is nice because it's going to let me um, have a public flag. I can just turn this off from the instance level uh, if I choose to do so. Okay. So um, I suppose I should put this training stuck. Uh, structure into action. So as part of training a data set, um, what do I need to do? Well, I need a do while loop, right? Because this is what lets us do this over and over and over until I've gotten the error that I want. So let me copy that, go into train data set action, paste it. Now, obviously all of those stuff inside um, has already been broken out into it, into their own methods. So we have our do while loop right here. And I'm going to do the following at the very beginning. So we're going to create a bool called success. Set it equal to true, because I haven't failed yet. Now, <coughs> if success is true, then we're going to set success equal to um, underscore before train epic, okay? Which is will return a Boolean value. I mean, right now, this is the base class. So it's always, always, always true. If we are still successful, so if success, then we're going to set success equal to train data, or I'm sorry, train epic action, just like that. And finally, if success, then we set success equal to underscore after train epic. Okay? So this will let us track our success um, as we are doing this while loop. Now, I don't want to keep doing this. There's no reason to s be stuck in this loop if I've already failed. And in fact, <laughs> if I failed, maybe I would never get out of this loop. So let me also put in a and success, OK? That way, um, if we fail at one of these stages, we bump out of the while loop and bump out of train data set action. Now, if I fail in here, I would like to report that. And in fact, that's why this method is a bool. So instead of returning true, I'm going to return success. Okay. So this will report back to the calling method um, whether or not this is succeeded. Okay. So uh, before train data set, we call initialize. It returns true because there's nothing else, uh, there's no place for it to fail. During train data set action, we track the success during this loop and bump out if we fail um, and return the result. And after train data set, you'll see this is empty right now because we're just returning true. Uh, that'll get filled in later, OK? Similarly, before train epic, there's nothing in here to even track as far as success is concerned. So let's just return true all the time. Train epic action, nothing in here really uh, could go wrong. Um, so we just return true, and after train epic, we similarly just return true. Okay, nothing, nothing special. Um, so those are in place. Now we're going to have to create our actual um, train data set method, right? And it's going to essentially call the this group right here. So as part of training a data set, we're going to call before train data set, we're going to call train data set action, and then afterwards, we're going to call after train data set. And of course, we're going to track the success and report that back uh, to the user. <coughs> so I'm going to pause this right here because we're hitting 15 minutes and come back and finish it. Okay, later.